look at my water glass. I to get very dry mouth and very anxious. Toastmasters with me know that it's, uh, it's a process. <laughs> so, uh, this is a lot of people. Holy cow. I think this is a great turnout. So, thank you all very much for being here. Uh, Canby has a lot going on, a lot coming up. Um, before I begin, I really want to thank Mallory. You're right, we do. We have some really good conversations. And, uh, they do run long, but we have a good time, and it's fun. There's a lot because there is a lot going on. Uh, I want to thank Council Rocha and Council Parker for being here today. Thank you guys very much. Uh, I know the rest of counselors are in other obligations and whatnot and can't be here, but thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Uh, Commissioner Savas, thank you both. Candy supports. Uh, Candy appreciates the support from you guys. Um, you guys both know that there's a lot going on, and having you guys here is important. So thank you. Uh, do you know that today's Groundhog Day? Yeah. yeah. And um, I like to take pride in the fact that I didn't also see my shadow, <laughs> which is hard to do because I'm kind of a big guy. So um, I'll have you know that uh, it's going to be um, an early spring. So it usually warrants applause. <laughs> I'm going to continue to thank these. I'd really like to take the opportunity to thank city staff. Uh, our city manager, Rick Robinson, his team, and all the city employees do so very much to keep our city going and keeping it going strong. In every department of the city, we are running anywhere from one to four positions short because of budget cuts each of the last three years. They, the city team, show up and make sure with Cubs help that the lights are on, the buses are running, the water is flowing, and our streets are safe. This past December, during heavy rains, our public work team members were, up, were out and on it. They were out working 24 hours a day for three days straight. They went and checked all the trouble spots around Canby. When they cleared the last spot, they turned around and started all over again just to make sure that we didn't have any flooding. So if those city staff members that are here, you please stand up and we can give them a round of applause and say thank you. quickly you stood up and sat down. <laughs> <laughs> Last year while I while giving the state of the city I talked about we and us as it pertains to we the city and us as community members. I will continue this because I believe it is up to us, all of us, on how Candy grows and how it keeps small town feel and values as we grow into a, a city and an even bigger city. We all must be involved and engaged it's a challenge when we all balance work, family, and all the other activities that go on in our personal lives. How do we fit in anymore? We are a participatory form of government here in the United States. Those that participate shape and mold what happens. Sometimes it can be a full contact sport, right Paul? I want us to be engaged. I want to know what we are thinking as a community. I'm often asked, Mr. Mayor, how's the city going? How's it doing? And my response is often, I don't know, you tell me, how are we doing? This is often responded with a quizzical look on the face because they're not quite sure how to answer or surprised that I, I would even ask. Sometimes I'm given exactly what I asked for. And my quick run to the grocery <laughs> store becomes a little bit longer than it was supposed to. <laughs> But I don't mind one bit. It goes with the job and I enjoy it. On a side note, how many of you are familiar with the Facebook page Candy Now? A lot of you are trollers on that website, that page. Because <laughs> I go there. And if you really want to know what's going on in Candy, yeah, go visit that Facebook page sometime. Right. They do not pull any punches. 
I'm still filled, as we go into this year, I'm still filled with a cautious optimism. Canby is a good city, and sometimes people have told me that they think it's a great city to live in and live near. We have challenges that we will work on and are working on. We will make course corrections and do our very best to keep Canby improving. Canby has always been thoughtful and deliberate in how we grow, as Mallory was talking about a little bit ago. That is not going to change. We cannot afford to be haphazard and accidental about our growth. Over the course of this state of the city, I'm going to give you a recap of what we've accomplished and paint a picture of what we are faced with and what we are working on. There are so many things to be excited about. New civic building, development of the city block, new business ventures coming into the industrial park. It is an exciting time to be living in Gamby. So here's what we've been done, here's what's been done the past year and where are we headed. So this year, 2016, started with some excitement as our police force with support from multiple agencies, brought a tense hostage situation to a successful end. Thank you, Chief Smith. In addition, the police department has been busy this past year. They added a new new narcotic canine to assist officers in searching uh, for illicit and illegal drugs. Uh, with the legalization of marijuana, many police departments are having to switch out their canine units uh, to ones not trained to detect marijuana. Our PD joined the Clackamas County Interagency Task Force, Task Force a coordinated group of local and federal law enforcement officials to reduce illegal drugs and related crimes, including child endangerment in Clackamas County. They've gotten on social media with Facebook, and it's resulted in the capture of several wanted subjects with the help of citizen tips. See, social media does come in handy. Yeah. <laughs> Traffic safety projects included collaboration with traffic's, the Traffic and Pedestrian Safety Committee, Public Works, and Canby School District to install sidewalks and crosswalks in front of Canby High School. Have you guys been down and seen the crosswalk that went in there? Jamie, did they use it? The crosswalk? Yeah, just yeah, the yeah, student. For the most part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
we are at a very exciting stage of the project. This is where we get to see the wall going up, things really start to happen. Just think, we broke ground on the Civic Building just this past year. This two-story building with its 25,000 square foot footprint will be a huge, and I say it like Donald Trump, huge, <laughs> to downtown. I have to throw a Trump joke over here, sorry. <laughs> this is the one of several additions that are planned for our downtown. <clears throat> on January 27th, we executed the GMP amendment and set the guaranteed maximum price for the library the Civic Building at $6.91 million. This includes a construction contingency of 243,000, sets the building completion date of late August, and building occupancy eh, middle end of September. <coughs> the two factors that will influence the project completion date are weather and material availability. We've already taken into consideration the time loss due to both factors in December. <coughs> the heavy rains in December did delay some of the work, as did a delay in receiving the structural steel that you're seeing out there right now. Structural steel and other special material needed for the project are now keeping up with the rigorous construction schedule uh, that we have set for this project. Once this is complete and we have moved in, this will leave all but two buildings on the city block vacant, as well as we can officially call it the old library building. Shortly after signing the land purchase for the new city hall and library, we immediately began conversations with the developer, the Hamlin Group, to develop the city block. Our goal with this exciting project is that it'll be a catalyst for future downtown improvements. This is a, a master developer driven project and design concept that will add first floor retail space, several floors of market rate apartments, plus the city hall and the old police department building could be part of the development or they can be developed separately depending on what the master developer wants to do. We have interest in both properties already. The additional downtown developments include interest by several businesses in what will become the old library building. We have a lot of people asking about that and inquiring about that building. The development of the block at Northwest First and Elm, where what used to be the Elm Street Inn, couches, you guys get it, uh, has been purchased and they're looking to add additional office space, update the restaurant, street improvements, and for Ryan Oliver, Possible railroad quite though. <laughs> Possible. Thought. It will be transformational projects and make for some very exciting changes to come to downtown in the coming years. In the meantime, activities continue to drive business downtown. The Big White Goose brought to life Junk Refunk Street Market and drew almost 5,000 visitors to our downtown this past August. And plans are underway this for this event again this year. Our Main Street program, led by Jamie Stickle, continued to organize First Friday events, coordinated with the Candy Arts and Culture Advisory Council for the installation of three sculptures on First Avenue, and continued the Halloween Spectacular and Pouring Down Rain this year. With the help of a number of community members and business owners, we added Candy's Big Night Out to kick off Candy's Big Weekend, and it was a huge success. This year, we will see this event grow, I am sure. Light Up the Night saw another tremendous turnout and made parade entries, and more parade entries than many of the previous years. This continues to be a marquee event for the city. One of our other marquee events this year, General Canby Day, <coughs> is going through some changes. In the fall, the General Canby Board uh, announced to the City Council in a work session that they wanted to move on. Uh, left the void so that right now the city has stepped in and with a number of volunteers are going to pull together what i'm so glad to announce as the candy independence day celebration and that will take place oh i just want to say oh. that. i thought it was time for one <laughs> What's the old run around plaza? Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll look at the numbers later. All right. <laughs> With the help of great many community volunteers, Candy Main Street will host this event, and the event will once again be closed out by a fireworks display with Western Fireworks Display and the Candy Volunteer Firefighters. To the, the top of all this was that Jamie Stickle, I don't think Jamie's here today, is she? Was awarded Oregon's Main Street Manager of the, award, of the Year Award back in October at the Main Street Conference in October. So that's... that's <laughs> I'm going to 
turn to economic development, economic development our urban renewal agency. Since its inception in 1999, the URD has added over $60 million in value to the tax rolls and hundreds of jobs in the city of Camden. The facade program saw one more project completed this past year and one more started in 2015 which in the next couple months. Camden Liquor Store has been completed and looks great. And Trinity Counseling is underway and then the Kiwana Store is up. I'll bring a proposal to bring uh, a facade improvement pro uh, process for them. This past year, the Urban Renewal Agency, uh, in working with the Candy Fire District, agreed to terms of providing funds from the URD to, to the fire district. These funds will be used for the fire district to make some capital improvements to their building and uh, purchase overdue equipment. The Candy Pioneer Industrial Park is currently full with no empty buildings. We have land. We have no empty buildings. We're actively working on numerous projects to help businesses locate in Candy. With Metro's recent decision not to expand the urban growth boundary, it makes our industrial park one of the more attractive, uh, makes our industrial park all the more attractive and increases our competitive advantage to other areas in the Portland Metro area. Projects that are happening are very close to a decision are, we have the Stratus Developments, which will be located along Sequoia Parkway. This 60,240 square foot building will be opening the winter of 2017. Bowen Building Expansion will add 26,400 square feet of warehouse space and construction will begin this spring. Trend Business Center will be adding building C to their portfolio. This building will be 30,000 square feet and enable three spaces for small to mid-sized uh, users. Candy Minutes Mini Storage is planning for this summer with a square footage of almost 40,000 square feet. Candy Commons Industrial Park will have three buildings estimated at 78,400 square feet in total. This will be located on land after Fred Meyer and the park on Sequoia there in the bend that you're heading into the industrial park. The develop has interest already and wants to plan uh, ground preparation when they start on the Candy Commons apartments in the spring. Leads that we are pursuing. So a number of these leads we have made uh, we made a, a number of lists, which is great. In, in a couple of cases, we are down to one or two cities as the choice. Project Blue Ice, which I think Daniel's done a great job of reporting in the paper, um, is a company that wants to invest $40 million in a 400,000 square foot building at Sequoia and Fort Avenue. They would employ 100 workers in the, within the first two years. The city would extend Fourth Avenue and utilities using state grants for most of the costs. We have support from Oregon Business Alliance in Clackamas County for this project. Yesterday, uh, I had the opportunity to lobby, get support from our Regional Area Commission on Transportation to support our efforts to seek money to assist with these road improvements. Another project, Project Morialis, a high-tech company is considering a 40-acre site to build 30, 350,000 square feet of a facility that would create 200 to 250 jobs. The plan to invest $140 million in the campaign. Project AK, so but, uh, Renata does a good job of, we don't know the names, she doesn't tell us. These are all code names so we know for sure. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know what Project AK is totally. She just gives me a name. Uh, this is a clean tech manufacturer is looking for six to eight acres for a 100,000 square foot, 30 to $40 million building. They would employ 60 and grow to 150 over the next three years. Compressed Gas Production Company, a uh, manufacturing distribution company, is looking at a seven plus acre site. They would invest 10 to 15 million and hire 25 to 50 employees. Project Crimson, a manufacturing distribution company, is looking for an 800,000 to 1 million square foot building and would employ 250 to 500 people to make a decision in the next couple of years. A few things going on. The Stratus Development, Project Blue Ice, Borealis, and AK, should they come to fruition, will be over 1 million square feet of new development in Camby. Bring in over 600 new jobs and almost $250 million in assessed value to our tax rolls. So, 
occasionally have this opportunity where I wake up in the middle of the night at about two o'clock in the morning and stare at the ceiling. And so, sometimes you have those moments, right, right, where you just start spinning and you can't quite turn off the brain. Regarding two of these projects, they have narrowed their choices down to Canby and one other city. We are one of two cities to be chosen between. The other city, in both of these situations, is Vancouver, Washington. So my concerns stem from just this one more recently, from this, some of the legislation currently being proposed in Salem right now. Uh, where did Carrie go? Carrie, I had to a little bit. You know, last month we had Senator Allen Olson speak to us, and it was a little bleak. Uh, was it? Uh, so I'll try not to be too too bleak about it. But it concerned me. We were specifically, we're looking at the minimum wage increase, uh, IP23, which is the uh, sales sales tax and sales over 25 million. There are others too, uh, but how does this keep us competitive? Uh, Vancouver doesn't have these roadblocks, so we have to rely on cheaper water, cheaper power, <coughs> great workforce, great community. Um, I attended the Clackamas Chamber State of the City's luncheon last week, and a number of the mayors expressed the same concerns. On Thursday, I attended a dinner with four of our state senators and three of the four felt these were going to be happening, and these are foregone conclusions. But we'll see these paths. So to me, I then start to wonder what happens to a putting river chocolate or a backstop or a quick play. They will adapt, I'm sure, for a short time. What then? Increased prices or worse? I want to see prosperity up and down the spectrum for sure, without a doubt. Seeing a new wage floor and then selling it is bringing up the lower income just sets the new floor level that fewer will ever get off of, or, will, or worse, will not have a job at all. I have shared these concerns with Senator Olson and Representative Kemmerer, and I've asked the Chamber Board to take a position, and if you as well, if you feel the need to do so, please do. The other wake up, stare at the ceiling at the 2 a.m. challenge that I can take off in is, is housing. Councilor Parker and I have had a number of conversations and text barrages and, in the evening of, of housing and what's going on. Camby now, it was a very long and interesting conversation and some great things were shared and some concerns. So here's what's coming up on the housing front. Camby Commons Apartments will break ground in late spring, early summer. This will be 166 market rate apartments that will be built. Just announced a couple weeks ago, Scott Territorial Apartments will begin, begin construction 42 bedroom apartments in fall of this year. Franz Meadow development on North Pine, 18 lots have been platted for construction to begin in March of this year. Additional development is occurring at Northwoods phase two, uh, phase two. Of their 33 lots, 10 permits have already been issued. Poplar townhomes, six townhomes are planned. Feist edition number six, which is crazy to think about. Of the 30 issued lots, there's three permits already issued, and there's hammers going out there right now. Emerald Garden townhomes, they've got 15 planned. It's a lot of a lot of new housing coming up. Late this spring or late this past year, Metro decided not to expand its urban growth boundary, and so how does that in fact impact us? Well, Metro has a target of 50 dwellings per acre. So if you can imagine what 50 dwellings per acre looks like can't go wide, you gotta go up. Um, which, and this is consistent with their desire to go up and not out and maximize services. What this will mean for Canby is yet to totally be determined. We have room within our urban growth boundary and we have the capacity to grow. With Oregon being one of the best places to live and Canby ranked number five on the list of the best cities to raise a family in Oregon, we need to be prepared and we are. That means we will need to be tasked with watching what goes on around us in Wilsonville, Oregon City, and other parts of Clackamas County. So this topic leads me to what we will be working on in the coming months and years. There are several items that we are tackling and grappling with as a community. And these will take planning, lots of discussion, money, and time. Park funding, the, current, the city currently has funded, has funding to support acquisition and initial park improvements but not ongoing maintenance. So we figure out the direction, the direction here, we cannot develop more parks to make them inviting. We'll be exploring options to ascertain the level of support for funding of ongoing maintenance costs 
and existing and, and new parks. Housing mix, affordable, workforce, equitable, whatever name you want to use this week, is a concern for many in Gambia. There are many wanting multifamily housing, or duplexes, triplexes, and apartments. The bigger thing that I hear though is more entry level housing. How do we get there? Thoughts and ideas to address potential housing shortage that are being discussed are smaller houses, smaller lot sizes, planned development communities. And if you have any other thoughts and ideas, we're here to listen. Another topic we're dealing with, like we talked about earlier, is road maintenance and their enhancements. In April, the council will be holding a day-long retreat to discuss the concerns mentioned here today. Housing, continued road maintenance, park and park maintenance, job growth, continued economic development. I'll be, I will be bringing forward an idea that may start to address how we may be able to develop entry-level housing. Housing is a big conversation across the county and the region. Can be seen the development of a number of higher-end homes. There will need to be discussion on how to address the situation. I understand that the market sets the tone. The conversation is more along the lines of what the city can change so that so as to not legislate and to, and to make it happen in that manner. It will not happen overnight. We have been working with our city attorney to investigate how we can return foreclosed properties back to being viable home purchases sooner instead of later. We don't have many. That's an opportunity for our city. We've been sharing thoughts and ideas around parks and where are possible things we can do. So those, are, those, are, those things are being talked about. No, that we as a council and as a city staff have been are talking about these things as well. There are a great many things going on in Canada. I'm excited about what the future holds for us. We are a community of doers. We want to see Canada prosper. It takes each of us to make prosperity happen. We do this by finding your favorite business and telling your friends about it. Send them there, here, in this town. Business is here. Wilsonville's great, but send them here. <laughs> Look here first, right? That's right. We have had a number of people, and will have a number of people, that move to Canby. We need to help them. We need to teach them about what makes Canby special. Teach them to not just come home at night, drive in the garage, and stay inside. Tell your employees about what is going on in this city. It will take all of us to help each other and can be be successful today and in the future. Thank you all very much for being here today. God bless you. May be abundantly blessed can be. Thank you. Mm -hmm.